Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a monoline brush in Procreate. Before we start though, let me tell you where you can find additional Procreate training. I have hundreds of classes at Skillshare and there's a coupon in the description below which includes an offer at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and generally better. If you sign up for Skillshare, you'll get access to thousands of classes there, including over 200 of mine. And I've just recently started posting Procreate videos there, so they will build up over time. So let's swing back to Procreate. A monoline brush is going to be a brush that looks like this particular one here. So it's going to draw as a fixed line brush. It has rounded ends and there's no taper on this at all. However hard I press, it's not going to taper. And it's going to do the same whether I draw with my finger or with the Apple Pencil. So let's see the process of making a brush like this. And along the way, you're going to learn something about the brush settings in Procreate. To create our brush, we'll go to the brushes library and I'm going to select inking because I want to borrow the basic studio pen. So I've got a studio pen here. It is already reset to the defaults. You can see that reset is not available. So I've actually set it back to the defaults that it is shipped with. The reason why I'm using this is that I want to show you how these monoline pens can be created even from existing brushes and how the various settings in Procreate affect your brush. So let's just see what this studio pen's going to paint like. You can see it's got some pressure sensitivity with it. That's painting with the Apple Pencil. And now with my finger, again, I've got some pressure sensitivity painting with my finger. And they're two different settings in the brush, so we'll need to control both of those. So let's go and make a duplicate of this studio pen. I'm going to tap on it. I'm going to tap on its name, and I'm going to call this Monoline. And because I'm going to add streamline to it, I will also add the word streamline to it so that I'm making a note to myself that it has streamline attached to it. I'll usually make one that is mistake. I'll usually make one that has streamline on it and one that doesn't. I use the one that doesn't generally as an eraser. So let's have a look at the source. The source is just a soft edge circle and the grain is just blank. So if we had a look at the grain there, it would be just a black grain. We'll go to stroke and see the settings that we want to set up. Well, this one's going to have streamline on it, so I could adjust the streamline value should I wish to do so. Streamline just makes it smoother to draw. It takes out some of the bumpy bits and so no streamline, no smoothness. Pressure taper is what happens when you use the Apple Pencil. So it's just the Apple Pencil settings. And at the moment, we've got some amounts here, and they are the beginning and end. We're going to tap the middle icon here and just adjust both of those back to zero because we don't want any pressure taper at all. We don't also want any adjustments of size if we press our pencil down a little bit harder. So we're going to take size back. We don't want any opacity. We don't want pressure here, so we're going to remove that too. But the one that we are going to adjust in an opposite direction is tip. We're going to take tip up here to 100%, and that's going to give us that blunt tip. So this is how it's going to paint right now. There is still some pressure taper on it, and that's controlled somewhere else. So that's the Apple Pencil. This is the finger. We still haven't dealt with the finger drawing, so we need to do that. For the finger drawing, we're going to touch taper. And again, we need to remove any touch taper. We need to remove the size, opacity, and we'll set the tip up to 100%. So that's going to be nice and blunt on the ends. This is the Apple Pencil. There is still some pressure on that. On the finger, there is no pressure sensitivity. So we pretty much got the finger drawing pen all working perfectly. This one here is not quite correct yet. Let's go to shape. For shape, we don't want anything basically set here. So we're not going to make any changes, except I am going to point out one thing. On shape filtering, you don't ever want to use none because that gives you a very, very boxy edge. So for shape filtering, just tap improved and then you'll get nice smooth edges on your shape. I've had a bit of problem with that myself, so I just wanted to point that out to you. 
for grain, this is the grain in the brush and the grain in our brush is just a black box or a white box. So it's not having any effect on the shape at all. So we don't have to worry about this at all. So we can just skip over grain. For dynamics, we want this brush not to build up color. It just needs to be a solid color. So flow needs to be a maximum. Accumulative isn't going to matter here because we're not going to be putting, say, a 20% coverage over a 20% coverage and have it build up. So having a cumulative on or off is not going to give you any value. For opacity dynamics, we don't want anything here for opacity or size. So we don't want our pencil to be giving any size or opacity variation at all. Now you've got three rendering types here. You've got normal, glazed and wet mix. So you want to set up your brush for all of these. So just make sure that the opacity dynamics are turned off here for normal and for glazed, which they are, and for wet mix. For pull, it doesn't really matter because we're not using dilution on this. So you can just leave pull where it is. The opacity and size dynamics though for the wet mix also need to be just set to zero and none. Now we're going to hit the pencil settings and this is going to help us control what happens with our brush when we use the pencil. Well, we don't want anything to happen except a line to be drawn. So for size, we're going to take this back to zero. So we don't want any variation in size, however hard we press. Opacity zero. And down here in the Apple Pencil tilt options, we don't want anything to happen if we tilt the pencil. We'll go to general. Now in general, all we're going to be doing here is setting the preview so we can adjust the preview size to make it a little bit larger or smaller should we wish to do so. I'm also going to set down here the size limits. The problem here is that my brush is going to be limited as to how big it will draw. So here it is at its largest size and that's how it draws. At its smaller size, it's down to 1% and it's going to draw very fine. Well, if I want it to draw bigger than this size here, I'm going to have to adjust it. And so we do that in the general options here. So for the size, I'm going to wind up the size quite a bit. Now, it's not going to give me anything more than just being able to paint it a bigger size. That's all I'm doing here. Minimum is it can't fall below the 0.3%. And opacity, I've got those settings for opacity. They'll be just fine. So let's see now at what our maximum size is for the brush. I like it to be this size because I can get a whole lot of color down. I don't think it's actually quite big enough for me, so I'm going to make it even bigger. Now I'm thinking I'm on wet mix by the look of how it's painting and I am on wet mix. So I'm just going to select glazed and it's painting a little bit nicer. It's a little less fluffy. You could also go back to normal and then you'll get less fluffy again. So now we have our monoline brush. It's going to paint as a single width line. It's going to have no tapering on the end and it's going to paint that way for the Apple Pencil, which is what I've just drawn on the screen. And now I'm using my finger and I'm getting the exact same result. Using my finger, however hard I press, the line is not varying. So that's how you can create your own monoline brushes for Procreate. I use this brush all the time. I use it as an eraser when I have one that is created with no streamline on it. And I create one like this just for drawing nice solid lines. So I hope you've enjoyed that video tutorial, learning a little bit about creating your own brushes in Procreate. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.